I'm Zalia. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, the Transcript crew recaps Decision Day, looks into the recovery process with some student athletes, gets cooking with Snow Angel director Steve Eldridge, and gets an in-depth look into Law Day. Howdy, I'm Mikey Diaz. Facebook announced Thursday afternoon that it has designated some high-profile people, including right-wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, as dangerous and said it will be purging them from its platforms. Jones and his media outlet Infowars had previously been banned from Facebook in August 2018, but had maintained a presence on Instagram, which is owned by Facebook. On Thursday, Jones and Infowars will be banned from Instagram as well. According to a Facebook spokesperson, quote, the process for evaluating potential violators is extensive and it is what led us to our decision to remove these accounts today. College decision day has passed, but more parents have been informed that they are under investigation in the nation's largest ever college admissions inquiry, stirring speculation about which executive or celebrities might be charged next. Charges were first announced in March against 50 people, elaborating on cheating on admissions exams and bribing of officials in order to secure admission to schools including Stanford, USC, and Yale. One parent is said to have paid six and a half million dollars to get their student admitted to their school. Hi, I'm Kaylee Hunter Gasparini, and welcome back to Tell It Like It Is. National Decision Day has finally passed, and everywhere you look, a ginormous weight has been lifted off the shoulders of many exhausted students. I sat down with some of these students to hear what they had to go through and the specific obstacles they faced before they committed. It was really hard for me to, to you know, picture, okay, how am I going to feel two years ahead when I'm in school, and am I going to regret not being somewhere else? The deciding factor in this particular school was that I just felt most at home when I visited. I honestly didn't even like intend to apply to the school. I did it last minute just in case because I wanted more schools to choose from and then when I visited I absolutely loved it. Financially it was like a really big decision for me. Um, one college was a lot more cheaper and, but it wasn't my top choice and the other college was my top choice but it was a lot more expensive so that was a big hurdle I had to go over. So I had it down to two different schools. Um, I was just really between them and I was just felt absolutely stuck. This was like to apply ED um, to one of them. Um, and then I just realized that one was like a little too far from home and like the science department wasn't like quite up to what I wanted it to be. Um, so that kind of made it easier but I was so stuck. The two schools that I was comparing were very similar so it was mostly just having to go make like pros and cons lists and try to figure out which was better between two, like uh, what were the strengths that one had versus the strengths of the other. I also thought it helpful to speak with someone who has supported many seniors on their journeys, so I sat down with Ms. Karen Hidalgo. I think there's a couple of different things that come up. One I think is that it's such a huge decision that um, it's easy to feel anxious about it and I think sometimes people get a little bit stuck in what's the right choice. The thing that comes up the most often with students is you know how to afford to go and some of the colleges can offer really good financial aid packages and and some of them not so much and so try to figure out and, and it can be really tricky if a student has their heart set on a particular college but the package that they get to other colleges are better. I think it's important to remember that how you feel the college is so much more important than the name of the college. So honestly I was thinking what gets me the farthest so is the education that I'm getting, is it worth the money? Think about like how you feel in the setting and, like, and if you can picture being there for four years. So congratulations seniors, unlike some celebrities we know you haven't scammed your way in. Good luck to you all and happy Friday. Hi, I'm Game Nicotera. Y'all ready for this? An injury can be defined as anything that would make you say ouchies afterwards. And I know everyone's had their fair share of injuries, but I wanted to interview someone devoted to the medical field. So this week I sat down with one of NHS's finest, nurse Candy Goyette. All right, I'm joined here with Candy Goyette. Thank you so much for being on Hamped Up. Thank you for having me. 
Um, and I guess my first question is, how long have you been uh, dabbling in the medical profession for? 25 years. And what have your jobs consisted of? I worked in labor and delivery at Bay State, and then I worked in surgery for years, and then I became a school nurse four years ago. What would go through your head if you would see a, a student in the hallway walking with their shoes untied? I would, it would make me crazy. I'd close my eyes and shake my head, and then encourage them to tie their shoes. Nice, as would I. It's a good, it's a good, <laughs> good suggestion. Do you have any athletes that come into your office for specific injuries that you might treat? I don't typically treat the injuries. Usually it's just an ice or an evaluation, but um, I feel like one of the biggest um, treatments that I take place, take part in here at the school is concussions. Right. Um, and like really like enforcing like resting and the accommodations and half days and things like that and educating. I feel like as a school nurse, that's one of the best um, things that we can educate and kind of treat kids because it's, a, it's not a prescription. You just kind of treat them for, symptomatically. So I would have to say that that would be one of the biggest. I gotcha. Well, thank you for being on Hamped Up this week. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Even I myself have been injured many times throughout my adult life. The most painful injury I can remember would date back to second grade when I thought it would be a fun idea to jump off the roof of my dad's van onto about a foot of snow. Long story short, I ended up breaking the growth plate in my heel, which sucked a lot. Unfortunately, for some of NHS's athletes, injuries have been somewhat prominent in the past few years. I wanted to sit down with a victim of one of the worst injuries known to man, a torn ACL. So I sat down with Sophia Bennett regarding everything she's gone through. Hi Sophie, thank you for being on Hamped Up. Of course, always a pleasure. So as I'm sure most of the world now knows, um, last year you tore your ACL mid-game. You want to take me through how that happened? So basically, it was the sixth game of a tournament, championship game for my summer team and some girl threw the ball like way over the head of my teammate and it was rolling out of bounds and I wanted to save it because it was a very close game and we was playing for the championship and so I went for one of the one-handed SC top 10 kind of save. Right, something you see on TV. Yeah, exactly. It's very like, you know, renowned. And I saved the ball and I ran out of bounds and I was going very fast, like my top speed, and I stopped short to avoid hitting my own father because I was about to run into him. And your father's an author, right? We couldn't have anything happening to him. Yeah, it's a very just, he's already gone through like surgery as well, so I didn't want to, you know, do anything bad to him. And basically my foot to my knee stopped moving and then the rest of my body kept going forward and everyone heard a pop and yeah. Do you want to walk me through the restrictions that come with tearing your ACL, like both physical, mental? Um, well, first, like mentally, it was very challenging because I went from playing lacrosse every day, all year round, to not being able to do it for uh, nine months, as you said. And that was very hard. It was hard at first, and I didn't really like, you know, really think about like the consequences of me not being able to like move and walk for a few weeks. Well, I'm glad you're back on the field. Good luck in your game. As am I. And thank you for being on Hamped Up. Always a pleasure. My message to all of the spring sport athletes right now is to just stay safe for the rest of the season. That's what I'm trying to do at least. Thank you for watching Hamped Up. I'm Gabe Nicotera. back to The Leftovers. This week we are here with very special guest Stephen Eldridge. We should tell them why we're making pretzels, would you like to say? Well, we're making pretzels because of the pretzel knot. And the pretzel knot is a special little um, kind of a pretzel cafe in the play Snow Angel by David Lindsay Bear, which uh, a bunch of NHS students are going to be performing in a few weeks. Uh, and it's a very important part of the play and they all keep showing up at the pretzel knot to talk things over. So we thought, why not learn how to make pretzels? So, Steve. Yeah. You've been talking about the show, Snow Angel. Mm -hmm. um, while you're working on mixing this up, why don't I ask you a few questions about it? So the show opens Thursday, May 9th. For you guys, that'll be next Thursday, if this is coming out on Friday. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be in the uh, auditorium at Northampton High School. Uh, it's going to run Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 p.m., and we do a matinee on Saturday at 2 p.m. 
One of the interesting things about this play is it's, it's not that long. I, I, we, we've had a reputation sometimes of putting on Shakespeare plays that seem to go on forever. This play will only run a little bit over an hour. It's very fast paced, it's very funny. You can buy tickets uh, on brown paper tickets mm -hmm. and you can actually just go to snowangel.brownpapertickets.com to buy your tickets for this show. $5 for students, $10 for uh, adults, oh, $5 for seniors, and $5 for NHS faculty and staff. Uh, once you have your dough at a consistency at about this, you're gonna knead it for seven to 10 minutes and then set aside for an hour to rise to double its size. Okay, so we're gonna roll, okay. And and it, it like it seems to like my hand. It's okay. very sticky. Yeah, yeah it, it is. Like Look at that! You've got an actual like pretzel shape. That's an thing. actual pretzel shape. Look what I have. It looks like um, a moonscape. Steve. Yeah. For anyone else who has taken one of Steve's classes, um, you appreciate failure, but continue to have a positive attitude, how do you enforce that? I, I had a really brilliant teacher myself who constantly reminded us to fail gloriously. Mm -hmm. That if you're gonna fail, really fail. If you're gonna try, really try. Don't try to only try enough so that you don't fail too badly. You know, one of the reasons I love the theater is that the only way to learn in the theater is to try things and make big mistakes and learn from them and then try another thing and then try another thing which really related to my life, you know? So I try to teach students to fail gloriously as well, to really, really go after something and learn from what happens. Wonderful. That was my final question for you, Steve. Would you like to give one last final shout out for the Snow Angel show? Come see Snow Angel. It is so funny. It is so delightful. The 16 teens on stage are so amazing. And the other dozen teens who are backstage doing all of the designing and tech are really amazing. I just think you're going to love this show. All right. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. Tonight in the Black Box Theater, you can attend Zalia Maya's senior capstone stand-up show, Diary of a Coddled Feminist. Nice. In other news... Last Wednesday was a senior college decision day, but it was also our county's own annual law day at the Old Superior Courthouse. This year's theme was an especially timely and relevant one, free speech, free press, and free society. Law day gave high school students the opportunity to tour the courthouse, view a thematic performance by PVPA students, and participate in lively discussion with a First Amendment attorney, a federal court judge, and our very own district attorney, David Sullivan. To see the action for ourselves, we headed down to the courthouse and spoke with participants. I'm a lawyer at a firm called Prince Lobel in Boston, where I practice First Amendment law. I represent newspapers and magazines and broadcasters to help them report the news. Great, thank you. So what do you think is the significance of an event like this to the community? Well, this is Law Day, not a holiday that's well recognized in the community, but it's every May 1st, and the intent of Law Day is to help people celebrate the rule of law in our country. And in fact, what courts and judges and lawyers do. Well, I don't think we can um, emphasize or remind ourselves often enough how important the rule of law is and how uh, it serves to nurture people's creative spirits and their individuality, uh, particularly as expressed through the First Amendment, emphasizes the right of people to express themselves, uh, to come together to petition government, the right of a free press, such as what we're doing right now. I represent newspapers to help them report the news. So I review their stories in advance and see if they defame anybody. Do they say something that might be false? I also help get access to government information that the government wants to keep secret. So for example, I intervene to unseal court records in secret cases that are important. And I bring lawsuits under the Freedom of Information Acts that, uh, for documents that the government would rather keep secret. Thank you. And so why is something like that important to our young generation? 
Well, student journalists report really important news all over the country. There was one student journalism team recently that uncovered that their school superintendent had inflated her credentials and gotten the job based on lies about degrees she didn't have. The school superintendent lost her job about that. Students have First Amendment rights that are protected by the courts. In fact, part of what I'm going to talk about today is how I brought a lawsuit against my own school district when I was in high school and won. Uh, and so students have free speech rights, they should use them, and in fact young people are creating incredible political change in our country right now, whether you consider the, the Parkland high school students or people who are affiliated with Black Lives Matter, they're doing great things with their free speech rights and every student should exercise theirs. Our uh, goal is to preserve the liberties that we have today for uh, people your age and younger who are going to be uh, moving into central roles in our community. We want people first to enjoy the same liberties that I had, and we also want them to respect and protect those liberties for others uh, as the years unfold. Great, thank you so much. Thank right. you so much. Thanks, nice meeting you. Thanks for watching. Seniors have only 13 more days of school. We've almost made it. I'm Amelia Tamayo, and this has been In Other News. Bye. And before Zalia tells you important details about prom, Gabby Katz, will you please step into the hallway? Thanks for watching. Prom tickets are still on sale, but not for long. The last day to purchase yours is Monday, May 6th. Tonight's the last night to see my stand-up show, Diary of a Coddled Feminist, with opening band Zoki. So pop by the black box at 7 to catch a laugh.